What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here on the XR1200, the greatest sportster of all time. Arguable, of course, but let me tell you what I'm something I'm good at is arguing. Go a mile a minute. I got a motor mouth. We got my man Brant here. Man, a few words. Polar opposite to my motor mouth is what Brant does. Brant here with the VTX, just like tagged up with everybody's sticker on it. We got all the Brap Star stickers, Flip Nas stickers, bikes and beards over here, Circus Bear Moto, all the nice folks that come down and visit us. And we have my man, Kevin. Do you even have an Instagram? I have one. You have one? Okay. Well, Kevin has an Instagram. We'll post it in this video. This is his very first group ride ever. And you pick the absolute worst people to do it with. <laughs> Trial by fire? Ah, oh, that's what I like, man. Trial by toxic freaking sludge. Damn, this bike makes a cool sound. Well, I'll tell you guys, I already know my man Kev is gonna fit in uh, just fine because he showed up to the group ride with no gas in his tank. First stop, the stab and grab. Just like the bar, man, you gotta buy the round. Plus, don't get too excited about this gas. Look at this freaking thing, dude. You pull this thing out and feel the tip, figure it's ribbed for your pleasure and double bag it. Don't worry, baby, it's just bumps. What's up, handsome? <laughs> What's up? Hard dicks and spaceships, baby. The light's supposed to change when you make the joke. It really is killing my comedic time in here, man. The Tampa City engineers are just, just really don't know anything about comedy, okay? All jokes aside, I did give Kevin a lowdown on, you know, the right way to act in a group ride, the right things to do, how to stay in formation and everything like that. You know, I know that I like, I mess around a lot, especially on motorcycles, but group riding is something we do take seriously and we do all the time. And I like to have my fun, I like to go fast, I like to do all those sorts of things, but I will tell you, one place I conduct myself very seriously Seriously, is in a group ride where other people are relying on me to do the right thing. In fact, one surefire way to piss me the hell off is to act a fool in a group ride. Everybody has a spot, and unless you're in danger, you need to stay in your spot because everybody else is relying on you to do that. Now, if everybody knows each other really well and everybody's really familiar with what's going on and knows where they're going, eh, there's a little big, bit of wiggle room. With motorcycles, you always leave a little bit of wiggle room because A, <laughs> it's not very much fun without a little bit of wiggle room, and B, if you don't leave yourself any wiggle room, you're gonna end up in between the car and the freaking <laughs> the side of the highway over there. The thing about a group ride is there's two responsible people here. You're responsible for yourself, first and foremost, but you also need to be able to count on everybody else in the ride for also being responsible. Now, they're not responsible for you. They're not resp completely responsible for your safety. Only you are completely responsible for your safety, but you need to rely on everyone in there to be responsible. And when you're leading the ride, you are definitely responsible for every single motorcycle behind you. Now, headed out to meet up with old Mike Branch, a couple other people, Wizard Overcomb, Mike the Barbers. I mean, we got a lot of mics today, actually. And, of course, my man Whiskey Chaser's in from out of town. I tell you what, man, I'm busy as hell these past couple weeks, but there ain't no freaking way. I'm gonna let an opportunity to pass to hang out with my buddy Whiskey Chaser, all right? In some as yet unreleased footage, me, Whiskey Chaser, and Mike Grant actually went on not a cross country trip together. It was, it was meant to be a trip going from Arkansas to Tale of the Dragon. Uh, but a couple, we had a couple mishaps along the way. So technically I still haven't finished that video yet. As in, I haven't finished actually creating it. Not even editing it. That was several months ago, but that footage will eventually see the light of day. So far so good, bud. Big ups to Mike Branch, by the way. Not only is he a grandpa and his wife is a grandmother, a <laughs> pretty attractive grandmother. I don't know. All the ugly dudes I know end up with attractive women, but there you go. Uh, it's definitely not our good looks or our charm that attract them, and uh, definitely not the smell or the money. Uh, I don't know what it is. We must have been very nice people in a previous life, but after all those years together of her not riding on the back of his motorcycle, then him getting her to ride on the back of his motorcycle, then being in a motorcycle accident together, like just trials and tribulations, all that stuff, raising children together, she just started riding her own motorcycle. And I wish I could have gone because they went to the Dirty Shame for the very first time the other day on her like inaugural ride out with them. So freaking cool. So proud of her. So excited for Mike. Make sure you go to his channel and check him out. I'm sure he's going to be posting videos of that. Hanging out here in Mike Branch's house and we <laughs> we finally found a motorcycle to fit Shelly. 
I was thinking you were looking like you were struggling on that Honda Rebel, so this is a little more. Oh, it's got training wheels, so you won't crash like last time. <laughs> Does it even have brakes? <laughs> Out here in front of Grandpa Branch's house, we got Penny Quest on the Franken Glide, baby. I love a solid mounted Evo. We call that the Hitachi Glide, all right? <laughs> it vibrates uh, for her pleasure and your displeasure. Oh man, Alex came up on the Street Glide. Mr. Buell over here, Bueller himself. Is that Ulysses, right? Yep. My man Whiskey Chaser over here on the Dad Glide, the Concourse. That's right. I dig it, man. In Malaise Brown. Shelly, of course, we got uh, Miss Crash over here, the Fox Glove on the Rebel. Woo! Oh, she's representing. I'm not to give her a hard time. And Skittles, of course, as well. Also, it's cra Crash Skittles, man. Yeah, man. You guys freaking keep I'm away crashing. from me, all right? Okay. <laughs> Both of y'all. All right, we better roll before Mike Branch's neighbors call the cops. Oh, that makes me miss my FXR. Hard to pick which motorcycle sound I like better. I think probably twin cam sounds the best, but there's always just something about an Evo. I can still say an Evo is my favorite Harley Davidson motor while also admitting that a twin cam's a better motor. Come on, man, Kevin over here looking like Hagar the Horrible in that helmet. All right, Chase, come on, put your ass into it, man. Come on, give him a hand. There you go, Daddy Jack's got him. Wipe the snot out of his nose too as you push him back. Oh, there goes his hat. I was wondering if that was gonna fall off or not. I wasn't sure if he had some way of attaching it or uh, if he just set it back there and forgot about it. I guess it was uh, it was the latter. So we're heading out right now. Uh, Mike the Barber and Sage didn't meet us up here. Sage, the most wholesome of all the holes. Well, they're meeting us at a place called Starkey Ranch. And I'm not really sure what this place is, but Mike says it was Mike's idea, Wizard Overcomb thought of this, and it's basically uh, a bar that's in a barn, or maybe it's a barn that has a bar in it. Yeah, that sounds pretty badass to me, man. I'm a, as long as they got cold beer, I'm pretty much willing to give anything a shot, and I'll drink at least three to ten business beers there just to make sure I actually like or don't like the place. Although after about ten to twelve business beers, just about any place, I start to become pretty fond of. Kevin, you lost your hat. I'm sorry, man. Okay. I'm glad you're pragmatic about it. I was worried you'd be very upset. If I lost my hat, still there, I would be inconsolable. Okay, well, this is Starkey Boulevard, so I gotta imagine that we're close. All right, Starkey Market? I don't know. What kind of white people heaven did you take me to, Mike Branch? I guess this was Mike the Barber's idea, but hey, we're talking about Mike's anyway. It's all Mike's fault. Okay, actually, I, I called it white people heaven, but it does look pretty cool. This actually looks awesome. Now oh, we got Sage over here on the most beautiful Evo ever. And of course, Mike on his, dang dude, he freaking did some work to his, to his, uh, to his bolt, man. Whoa, take it easy. I love this Dyna, this old Evo Dyna, but dang man, Mike did some work to old Shrek 2 over here. It looks great. It really looks good. Wow. I'm impressed. Spike looks great. The pinstripes. I mean, uh, I'm not saying it's perfect, but this is probably the coolest looking bolt I've ever seen. That's for sure. Well, here's a real problem. His Bueller is real messed up. Chase is getting all New York on us. I'm driving here. <laughs> yeah. About to have to sick Sage on him. We got old prison pussy Mike over here. <laughs> and now Kevin. I'm about to push him off the side just for a video. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Old two baldies over there. Look, looking like two naked mole rat dicks just like jumping through the field. Right, we're up here at uh, White People Heaven having a hamburger. Uh, Mike took us here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen more diverse to be at a clan rally, dude. <laughs> this place is amazing, dude. I'm surprised let Alex in. <laughs> but to put you to work so they can meet their quota. <laughs> Yo, somebody give this guy a job so the government doesn't come down on us, all right? We gotta make our equal opportunity quota. <laughs> they found out I was from New York City. Right? Isn't it crazy so how... Dude, Chase like manages to squeeze in that he's from New York City into every conversation. Yeah. It's a really amazing, truly. Yeah. Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> Talent, uh, talking about pizza. anyway. They said we gotta go, uh, <laughs> and I knew we had to go because all the uh, bartenders like slowly walked away from us after their fake laughs at all of our jokes <laughs> slowly died away, and we're just standing there laughing at our own jokes, which is not weird for me. But I also know it's time to go. I, I thought I was funny. They said 
Oh, people from New York always do. Yo, they put on that skate music. My man Brant started breaking it down. How do you get this many bikers together and there's there's multiple rink rats at this shit? Playing here is getting all the rink rats going. <laughs> I'm complicit, but here's the thing. We're all going back to the dirty shame right now. They called Brant earlier and were like, will you please come work the door? And Brant was like, no, I'm riding motorcycles. <laughs> so he's not, or maybe you, but I'm like, it's a black lung. I can't come in. Oh, I love it, dude. So he's like, oh, I'm going home. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, you can oftentimes find my man. Yeah, you can oftentimes find my man Brant working the front door. Hey, I'm not there today either. I'm all about it. Let's roll out. Dang, Shelly and Sage both repping Brapstar gear. I love it. Oh, good hanging out, Sarky Ranch. I ain't gonna lie, dude. Does anybody look cooler on a road glide than Diplomat does? <laughs> Give me a break here. You look very cool on that bike. It does. It, well, I can tell you're trying. <laughs> He's got all sorts of plans for this bike, man. Make sure you go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Oh, they seem like very nice folks up there at Starkey Ranch. I just, uh, I don't know if they're ready for us. We're, <laughs> we're rude, crude, and uh, smell like unchewed food, all right? Definitely probably wanted us to go. Luckily for us, they were way too polite to ask us to go, so it was turning south a little bit. They were just getting a little bit over our bullshit, which uh, what remarkably lasted a long time. They put up with a, an extraordinary amount of our bullshit. They literally deserve an award for the amount of our bullshit that they put up with. Come with us! I just shouted that kid on the Indian to come with us. We'll see if he does or not. Uh, all that sissy bar and still stalls this bike. Yeah, I like that. You practice stalling your bike at home or what? Oh, there goes our kid on the Indian. I was hoping he'd come with us. Huh? Yeah, you can get on it. Oof. I don't mind doing Chinese fire drill. My hip's hurting anyway, dude. <laughs> Getting on the road glide will be a little bit of a break. <laughs> oh, and I get the tunes, baby. I love riding that XR, but I'll tell you, uh, after riding it for a little while, you do start to get, to, you, well, when you're my fat ass, my hip starts to hurt. As soon as I sit on this, I can tell that Alex's arms are longer than mine, that's for sure. Of course, he is 6'4". I don't mind putting time in on a twin cam road glide. This is a hell of a motorcycle. Even if the bars are a little bit of a stretch, I mean, I'm 5'12 and a half, which is, I think is a above average 5'12 and a half. You said it was a good size. Oh, there goes my Honda hat. Not gonna lie to you guys, I'm pretty bummed out about my Honda hat. Damn near inconsolable. God damn it, dude. That hat was actually really special to me. I've been wearing it forever. Whatever. All things must end. Everything's temporary. It's all right. I'll live. But it was given to me by, by a good friend, and I am bummed it's gone. But I guess I'll just have to get a new hat. Such is the fragility of life. Fragility of life aside, uh, my eyeballs are floating right now. I gotta piss like a steer. We better hurry up and get to the dirty shame. I hope Alex isn't upset that I commandeered his bike for a little bit. He does have my bike after. Well, I guess it's not really my bike, it's Bert's bike. Anyway, <laughs> I, I can't go to the dirty shame without a lid. Yo, what's up, man? Holy crap, dude, it's so good to see you, man. <laughs> oh, listen up, baby. It's never bad to see your beautiful face, all right? Dude, we gonna come over and give me a nice firm hug. All right, I'm going in front now. We're going to the shame. I don't know what my buddy Rudy Reyes was, uh, the artist formerly known as Rudy Reyes. He's now known as Golf Goth. I don't know what he was doing in that Tesla, <laughs> but hopefully he comes up to the dirty shame later. Just realized that I rode Alex's bike to my house and he went to the shame and I don't have a key fob for his motorcycle. Uh, this presents kind of a problem. Oh my gosh, Alex already had so many hats in here. I could've just, Taking one of his to my rescue. My hero. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That really helps. <laughs> my hat flew off. I had to go get another one. I wanted, I was going to ask you for that hat. I know it's a really cool hat. I'm bummed it's gone. What's on the interstate? Knock yourself out. It's all yours. All right. I got a lid once more. Ugh. It's time to do the dirty shame, baby. Let's rock and roll. The one, the only, the infamous, the disgusting. Oh my gosh, look who it is, no moving parts. <laughs> What's up, bud? 
spells any better, I be you. It's a whole new world, man. It is, dude. A whole new world? You about to sing me a Little Mermaid song? You want me to sing all right, my man Sean over here, he comes up here and he's got two prosthetic legs, right? Um, with cowboy boots on, you guys can't even see it because it's too dark. I didn't think nothing of it because I'm just like, well, you know, in the motorcycle world, you meet people with prosthetic legs every once in a while. It's not, a, I mean, it is a big deal, but it's not a big deal. He comes up here and he goes, yeah, I fucking lost my legs two years ago. I've only had my prosthetics for six months. Didn't walk for a year and a half. His motorcycle's in the parking lot. Steady <laughs> road up here. Baller. Walk, started walking again six months ago. That's a lot of balls. Take that in. His motorcycle's in the parking lot. I didn't know he was coming up here. He just fucking walked, well, clomped up to me. <laughs> I fucking heard his ass coming and said, hey, are you changing your surgery? I said, yeah. And motherfucker. Anyway, more on that later. You gotta tell that story, fucking. That's wild, dude. Well, damn, about to ride Kenny Quest Evo, which the Franken Glide is very cool. It ain't this one. Sorry, brother. It's just not. There's no very few bikes that are as cool as Sage's Evo. This is a very cool motorcycle. But let's see what Kenny Quest's Franken Glide is all about. He goes, something breaks on it every time I take it out. <laughs> It's a character building experience is what it is. You got anything done to the motor? Uh, nope, just has the Andrew scam in. Oh, it makes me miss my FXR is what it does. This is a cool bike. Good job, man. Oh, it rips too, man. I like this motorcycle. Kenny Quest, you built a cool bike, man. I'm loving it. I'm into it, baby. Two thumbs up, baby. Can I take two hands off of it? Yes. You built a good bike. I can take both hands off of it to give it two thumbs up. Of course, I love fat boys. I love Evos. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, the, the, the cards were stacked in your favor, that's for damn sure. Dude, this bike fucking sucks. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I love it. <laughs> no, it's amazing, I love it. <laughs> Mike, take it for a ride, man. It's actually very nice. It's fast, too. It's faster than I thought with just a cam. Do a wheelie, pussy. Pop a wheelie. Right. I mean, you probably could if you tried harder. I didn't try that hard. I got full coverage. <laughs> oh wait, can I take another ride? Mike the Barber taking out the XR1200. Gonna see what he thinks of it when he comes back. Here he comes. What's the verdict? Dude. You love it? Yeah. Yeah, is this the best? Yeah. Don't you love it? Dude, it's like a Harley, but acts like, like a Japanese bike. I got up to 105, like no. Right, like nobody's business. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. This is a 06. 2006 Buell Ulysses. I've only ridden one other Buell besides this. Um, well, I mean a Buell Blast. Like Shelby's Buell that was done up. Well, they just had to put it on the left, just be a fucking asshole. And make it turn backwards? <laughs> Eric Buell's a real dick. Oh no, an absolute genius, but like that's just like backwards on purpose. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, Harley Davidson built <laughs> built the Pan America. They built an adventure bike. Trust me, they already built an adventure bike. It's Buell Ulysses. I don't know, Bueller. Something tells me, I think this is like, Oh yeah, as it lifts the front over that. This is faster than the XR1200. <laughs> I love the XR1200, don't get me wrong, but the Buell Ulysses, which is not even Buell's fast bike. That is definitely faster than the XR1200. <laughs> oh man, you know, which is a little upsetting because I'm just like, I love the XR1200 so much. And I jump on this thing, I'm like, well, the XR1200 is pretty cool, but it ain't no Buell Ulysses, is it? The XR1200 comes alive above 3000 RPM and it just starts to feel like an insane motorcycle. This feels like an insane motorcycle throughout the entire rev range. Dude, this bike is great. I like it a lot. It does wheelies. 
All right, here with my man Kevin Wolfsing813. Dot 813. All right. Well, you guys just met him on this Honda, which I've always thought was a really cool bike. I thought it was a really great beginner bike, but you can't stay a beginner forever. I mean, I guess you could, but uh, you know, not a lot of people want to, and neither does Kevin. So we're off to Haps BMW in Sarasota, which I've never been to, but I've heard is the best BMW dealership around. Did I really walk out here with, oh, there it is. <laughs> Freaking, I can't tell you how many times I've left my Ducati key in there and ran away back when the Bluetooth worked on it. What in the hell? Another gold wing at the stab and grab? Don't they know this is my turf? Is that, is that, did you, is that yours? Dude, hell yeah, man. But I need time for you. Hey man, I'll catch up with you soon, dude. Whatever you want to know, man, I'll show you about the bike. That's freaking cool, man. The guy who's always at the cash register in there told me that he just, he's always liked my gold wing, my green one, and he just and he's always been like, how much, how much? Sell me that thing. Hell yeah, that's freaking awesome. That's a lot nicer than mine, bud. <laughs> I got gas and starchy. Oh. oh shoot. <laughs> <clears throat> I know I'm getting deja vu. Nothing but the best for the douchecotty. Bend over and smile, baby. My man Kevin, old wolf song back there, got me up early, baby. Oh, if I got my beauty rest. But when it comes to new bike day, I don't mind getting up early, all right? I love new bike day. Well, he hasn't test rode it yet, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, upgrading from that Honda Shadow, even though there's nothing wrong with a Honda Shadow. I mean, it's so many people's first bike, a Honda Shadow 750 or even a VLX 600, or I mean, so many people on a Revel 2. 50 but a, a, a honda like three they call them like three quarter cruiser a honda cruiser is so many people's first bike now there's nothing wrong with a shadow 750 and a shadow 750 or a shadow 1100 you can honestly have those bikes forever I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people right now who have had those bikes for years who don't mind them at all. They make really cool bobbers. They they make cool custom projects. And I, maybe not the best touring bikes, but I'll tell you from personal experience, I have toured on much worse and still had a great time. So when I say it's common to upgrade from a Honda Shadow to something bigger or something better, that's not talking any crap about a Honda Shadow of any variant or size. They're an amazing motorcycle that you can literally have the entire time you have a motorcycle and they can keep you interested they certainly go fast enough they they're they're infinitely customizable they're really great bikes but most people who have a honda shadow are pretty eager to see what comes afterwards and my man kevin a wolf song back there wolf sing <laughs> he's no exception whatsoever so when he asked me to ride with him up to Haps to check out a new bike, I said, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Because I think we're going to, even though it hasn't always treated me the best, I'm a bigger fan of BMW than I am Ducati at this point. I love BMWs. I think we might be talking old Kev back there into the Euro LGBT BBQ family. Owning a European motorcycle, uh, when you got a Ducati, it's a character building experience. Uh, BMWs are usually pretty stone cold reliable. The sign says Honda, but I know they, I know they sell BMW because whenever I hear somebody talk about Haps, they're always talking about BMW. And um, this place does not look open. Well, it doesn't look like it's open because it wasn't. It's 8.45 in the morning. I'm not used to being up to a place uh, before they open. It's odd to me, and watching the whole staff walk in uh, makes me think we should go get breakfast before we try to buy a bike. And after my many, many, many years in the bar industry bartending and hanging around tattoo shops for years and years, I've, no I've learned one thing from tattoo shops and bars. The first customer in is not your favorite person. I gotta imagine it's probably the same at motorcycle dealerships. So why don't we let uh, some other sucker come in and take the brunt of all the salesmen who didn't be able to want to be at work today. And we'll come in second. This whole parking lot smells like dog shit, doesn't it? I was like, oh, Poppy's place. We'll go get like a family restaurant. What the? Oh, you know what it is? That's manure. Oh, good thing we turned in. Woo. Yikes. Yeah, maybe we should park in the back. There's fucking shit particles all over the place out here. It's a fucking shit storm out here, dude. I don't know if I can handle this. Imagine that's what you wash out on. That would suck. Let's park in the back. I don't want to be near the shit. All right, we stopped at Poppy's. Uh, outside might smell, but the inside is great. 
Debbie, our waitress, is amazing. She gave Kevin, got the house special, an entire bowl full of gravy. A fortnight's worth of gravy. Yeah, I got the half order of gravy and some french fries. All right, now that we're full of gravy, we got my man Kev and the R9T Scrambler, which is a hell of an upgrade from the shadow. I love R9Ts, I think they're great. They look great, they're fast as hell. You could definitely do much worse than this bike. Hey, look man, it's not that tall. Kevin was worried about it being a little tall compared to the other one, but it's not that bad. What it is gonna do is haul ass. Dude, so I just, I met these guys over here. We're at Hap Cycle, it's a family dealership. Like I was saying earlier in the video, everybody tells me that Haps is just the best place around. I mentioned Richard Boom, they immediately knew who I was talking about. Born on motorcycles, they said the first car they ever bought was their father who started the dealership, bought a car to drive up to Harley to tell them what was wrong with the bikes. And on the way back, he said, we're, we're not gonna be a Harley Davidson dealership, we're gonna be a Honda dealership. And it's a Honda dealership now, and I just thought that was, what a cool freaking story. That was 1961, and they got a museum upstairs, they bought 50 Hondas, and uh, I don't know, man, I got goosebumps telling that story, that's so freaking cool, thanks for sharing that with me. Yeah, that's Hap on that one? Yeah. They just told me another story about Hap, about how they took took their mother pregnant in labor on a motorcycle to, to the emergency room, and they also came home on motorcycles. That is dedication. If you imagine my man here on, <laughs> on an old man bike, you might have been wrong because he goes like, no, nah, I rode my 1100 here today with all done up with a Vance and Hines. You only ever is uh, as old as you act. And when you're riding around on something loud, mean and nasty like this, you ain't acting that old. <laughs> Oh, and you got that. <laughs> Raced in the Enduros, and it's called the Woods Pussy. <laughs> Woods Pussy is the Florida skunk. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like your dad, Hap, had a pretty good sense of yeah. humor about him, too. That's them playing motorcycle polo. See the balls and stuff they're kicking? All crazy stuff. Here. Dude. That's my brother Denny, the dirt tracker, the road racer. He won a lot of races. I can only imagine what kind, what kind of guy drives a car up to Harley Davidson to tell him to fuck off, then comes back and opens a Honda dealership. I bet he was a hell of a dude. I used to motocross with a button down t shirt and win. That's, that's you right there? Yeah, I won the open class. Dude, that's, you know what, man? That was back in the day where I'm just like going, like, I need my special suspension on my KTM and, and my little special pegs and. Back in the day, you're doing it with two inches of suspension travel and a button-down shirt. <laughs> Here's our half a million mile gold wing that JB used to own. Dude. There's the first Honda that came in our building in 1961. So that's what they're saying. When they switched from Harley to Honda, they the deal to become a Honda dealership is they had to buy 50 of these Honda. The Honda Cub, right? They sold 49 of them and they kept one to run groceries on. And that is the one. The first Honda in the store when they made the switch. That's freaking cool. 82 MB5 that I had my grandson turn into a cafe racer when he was 14 years old. So it still runs in the family. Grand, grandkids too. Yeah. That's my mom and dad in 1950. <laughs> freaking cool. Ride. They came out in 49. Man, just such odd bikes that you don't see, like the Fat Cat and all these That's little a, ones. That's a beautiful a Triumph. Model. This Triumph, my brother used to dirt track race. We turned it into a street bike for my dad. This thing is looks like immaculate. My brother restored it for my nephew who passed away with pancreatic cancer. I'm very sorry to hear that. And that was my brother-in-law's bike. He passed away with lizard cancer. I'm very sorry to hear that as well. Were you guys a Triumph dealership at all or you just raced them? No, we were. You were a Triumph for a while as well? Yeah. Once they turned into the new Triumph USA, they screwed us so bad I had to give it up. That's a 59 Sportster that my brother used to race. Actually, everybody raced it. See all the holes drilled in the case and stuff? You yeah. see the aluminum work? Yeah, I loved that back in the day when they were just like, not everybody knew exactly what was going on, but they're like, I bet if I shave a little bit of the skirt off this piston, it'll move faster in the engine. <laughs> This bike right here is this bike right here. Then Damn, that's cool. It into the fairing bike, which uh, Kenny Stevens rode. The Southeastern Regional Championship came by and the Harley Factory was coming, so we put this one on the track and beat the Harley Factory and sent them home. <laughs> Thank you so much. The personal tour is so much better. Thank you. That's a 305 Dream and that's a 150 Dream 77, which is a 305 Superhawk. And then there's the 160 version. 
What do you remember just selling just a bunch of back in the day? Boy, the little Hondas in the 60s sold like crazy. Like the Cubs and the Trails yeah, and stuff, stuff like that? Less. And then we had a run in about the mid-70s. It just went opened up crazy again. 1969, when Honda came out with a 750, that market exploded. Honda captured 54% of the USA oh market of motorcycles. It's so funny, man, because you think about Honda as being like this kind of stodgy company and, and like just so traditional, but man, they built some wild motorcycles. Here's Honda's a, devel race, racing development just built some wild stuff. When I was young, I used to build choppers. There's an old Triumph that I built. I went to Daytona. That's the year I beat Paul Sr. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you guys got a, got a habit of beating the bigs, huh? <laughs> That's me out in Colorado riding my old BMW. Yeah, my buddies used to have a little sign on it that said, nice Ola Mills backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> this is a life on motorcycles, man. I love it. Ride Enduros, racing hair scramble. See, I love this, man. And so this is exactly... My buddy Phil and I, we were competitive with each other and I won the state championship and he got second. Dude, you're my favorite kind of biker because you see everything on this wall. You're seeing everything from choppers, enduros, dirt bikes, road racing. I won uh, the bike show in 1989 with my 750 Triumph Trident and then I restored it and 25 years later won it again with the same bike. <laughs> My dad's trike, which I painted this thing. You painted this? A year, millions of years ago. Oh my gosh, dude. That's some original OG, like Ed Roth style flames on this thing. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. This is like when you used to own a Harley Davidson dealership, you build choppers and it's time to buy a Goldwing trike. <laughs> this is what it ends up looking like. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for this tour. This is so freaking cool. In 1950, we started an off-road race here called the Jolly Roger. In 71, we ran out of land. My mom made this flag and always sewed the winner's name on it. First year, we had not enough rules. So there was a three-way tie for first. <laughs> Go, Brian. He's the chief race engineer for the Harley-Davidson factory. Kenny Clark was our master bike builder here. In 1963, this guy, Red Wells, he always wanted to win this event and he got killed. And Dick Connect rode the race under his name and won it. Man, that's, what a good dude, man. So there was all kind of crazy crap. We used to do. Triumph right there is 160 mile an hour. Holy mackerel, dude. It's fast. Dude, all these, so all these old engines, Kevin, they, back in the day, it wasn't like CAD design, computer, whatever. They would just take the internal parts out of them and just start shaving shit off of them to make them faster. That's my brother, Denny. In 1971, he won the 100 mile race at Daytona Beach on a 750 Honda. Dude, I bet when I make, when this video comes out, there's gonna be like a hundred comments of people watching who are like, oh, I know Haps, I know Haps, I remember these guys from this. this I bet you. That's the finish line at Daytona. That's that's my brother right there. That is so freaking cool. This is when he won the national championship and the world title the same year. I rode around the track at Barbara once. I didn't race. <laughs> I just rode around it. <laughs> I inspired my buddy Eugene to build that bike. We won the Daytona show with it and took out all the giants. I love that you're always doing on Triumphs too. I've got a Triumph chopper in boxes right now. That's my the only guy I next like project. Me that Ron Finch. He's a Triumph lover. <laughs> I, like I was saying, as my man rocks out on the on the Rebel 1100. You're only as old as you act. Man, I tell you, when I pulled up here and I saw this building, that is not what I expected to find inside. That was so freaking cool. Hap Cycle Sales, what a freaking place. That that was really, really just an awesome experience. Uh, getting the tour of their museum from Bob himself, Hap's son, that was just so freaking cool. <laughs> I, I just... It, you can always tell when you're really gonna like somebody. And for me, it's when somebody looks like that, they look like a grizzly old biker, they got a Sturgis t-shirt on, and you think that they're just gonna be, you know, I live and die Harley Davidson and I ride 10 miles a day. And then you get a guy who's done everything from Harley Davidson road racing to enduros, to flat track, <laughs> to, to building Triumph choppers, to racing Harleys, to, to doing all this different stuff. And you're like, damn dude, all right. I hope that one day I am that old and that cool. That was awesome. Bob, if you're watching this right now, that was absolutely a treat. And I got goosebumps like 10 different times while you're showing me all that stuff. 
And if I could ever hope for anything, it's to be able to walk through somewhere and point out that many, th that many things and that many pictures and that many motorcycles and have that many amazing stories. Thank you. A really, really cool experience at Hap Cycles, man. Just, just not what I expected at all. Great people down there. Uh, a cool little update to what happened to Kevin's Honda Shadow. So he initially was going to trade it in on the BMW R9T, and uh, they're going to give him a thousand bucks for it. Which, if you've ever traded a motorcycle in, that's like good dealership, bad, whatever. It's like that's usually what you get for like a you know ten year old used Japanese cruiser motorcycles. They're going to try to give you a thousand bucks and. Kevin wanted 1500 bucks for it. And I said, uh, hey, wait a second. I'll give you $1,500 for that motorcycle right freaking now. And I did, and uh, now it belongs to one of the boys at Forgotten Angels. That is now Ethan's motorcycle, because Ethan had told me that he was looking for a motorcycle. He had told me what his budget is, and told me kind of what he was looking for, and he asked me if I could help him find something. And the minute that came up, I go, hold, hold the phone. I know exactly who that bike would be perfect for. So more, we're gonna go ride with Ethan actually tomorrow. <laughs> it's not gonna be in this video, but we're riding with Ethan tomorrow. We're gonna be riding with Kevin tomorrow on his new BMW R9T. So it's gonna be really cool to see, you know, that upgrade. Like, you know, everybody wants to know what, when or what they should upgrade to after having a Honda Shadow or a VLX 600 or something like that. And just watching Kevin make that upgrade and then Ethan, who just got his motorcycle license, got all his gear and seeing him get his first bike that's not a scooter and start riding around. And it's that Honda Shadow 750. I just think it's so cool. It's really, really just warms the cockles of the heart. You know, it's so, it's so wholesome. It's the whole sum, baby. And we love that around here, especially at Forgotten Angels. Don't forget, we got the Forgotten Angels Weirdo Camp Out. It's going to be Halloween weekend. And also don't forget, we're giving away a Hummer. So... If you want a chance to win a Hummer, click that link down below. 100%, 100%, I don't take a dime, nobody takes a dime, doesn't hit any branches on the way down. 100% of every dollar spent on raffle tickets goes directly to benefit Forgotten Angels and young men who have aged out of the foster care system. So if you've been to the camp out, if you've seen what we do out there, you know it's going to a good cause, you know that it's changing lives. And I'll tell you, nobody takes a dime, it goes straight there. Anyway, that's going to about do it for this one. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird.